Hi, John from the Historic Game Shop here to talk about board games that were being played from the 11th to the 13th centuries. This period saw the introduction of games into Europe that were to become some of the most important games of the following 800 years or so. However, the two games that were being played by the Vikings and the Anglo-Saxons, the Tafel Games and Nine Men's Morris, were still very popular. I've made a short video explaining the rules of Tafel Games, and I shall explain the rules of Nine Men's Morris later in this video. To begin though, I would like to mention the wonderfully rich resource for games of this period, which comes from the late 13th century. Alfonso X of Castile, also known as Alfonso the Wise, commissioned the translation of an Islamic text on board and dice games and added illustrations of the games being played. This book of games included Nine Men's Morris and Albuquerque, which I shall explain here, but also tables and chess games and the first dice games to be written down. This includes the rules to Hazard, the most popular dice game of the medieval period. I shall use a number of the illustrations from this book of games in this video. Tables games, early forms of backgammon, were introduced into Britain in the 9th century and quickly became popular, played on rectangular boards without hinges in the middle to fold them. These two examples are from the 12th and the 13th centuries. The polychromic one is a reconstruction of the board illustrated by Alfonso the Wise in his book of games. This book also illustrates a number of tables variants, including one with seven points in each house, and a circular four-player tables game. Both use seven-sided dice, the manufacture of which the book also describes. The other is a board of an early 12th century date from Saint-Denis in France. Only the points, central bar and border survived, but the board looked something like this in reconstruction. I've made a short video on the history of tables games, beginning with their Roman origins up to the 18th century, which gives more detail. Chess was also introduced into Britain at this time, and the many finds of chess pieces give a good understanding of what the game looked like in the early medieval period. Again, I have made a short video on chess from the 9th to the 17th centuries that gives more detail on the evolution of chess pieces. Rhythmomachia, a game invented in Germany in the 10th century, uses symmetrical geometric patterns to display arithmetic equations which are used to capture opposing counters. It was invented to teach arithmetic to young monks but became widely known throughout Europe, though probably played only by a few. It continues in play to the present, where it is still popular amongst mathematicians. In this video I want to concentrate on two games that were very popular at this time. Nine Men's Morris, which we have already mentioned, and Alkirki, the important forerunner of drafts, though this evolution happens a little bit later. We'll begin with Nine Men's Morris. Nine Men's Morris has its origins in the first century of the Roman Empire in the Mediterranean area. It quickly spread and was known to the Vikings and Anglo-Saxons and has been played throughout history since then. The rules are simple and the game has three phases. First, the board is empty and the two players place alternately a counter on one of the corners of the three concentric squares or on one of the intersections of the lines connecting the squares. The player's aim is to create a row of three counters along the sides of the squares or along the lines connecting them while also trying to block their opponent from doing so. If a player manages to make a row of three, then they may remove one of their opponent's counters from the board. This should be one that is not in a row of three, though if this is not possible, then one in a row of three may be taken. Captured men do not come into play again in the game. Just to note that a row of three across the corners of each of the squares is not possible, as there is no line connecting them. However, I will mention this again a little later in a variant of the game. Once all the players' counters are on the board, the second phase of the game begins. Players take turns to move a counter, one each turn to a nearest adjacent position, again trying to make rows of three, allowing them to remove a counter belonging to the other player. The two players continue like this until one player is reduced to three counters on the board only. This is phase three. This may happen when the other player has seven, eight or even nine counters still on the board, or it may be that both players have suffered a number of losses and the game is more even. 
The player who is reduced to three men on the board will lose the game if one or more of their counters is taken. So, to help the player, they can move their counters in this phase of the game one each turn but to any vacant position on the board. This advantage can swing the chances of the player's success or can simply prolong the agony before losing. A rule that prevents players making very swift success in a game is to prevent a row of three formed in a particular place on the board being made for a second time by moving one counter out and in again. The rule states that another row of three has to be made somewhere else on the board before the first one can be reformed. However, there is a rather sneaky position that allows two rows of three being formed and reformed alternately each turn. Both players should be wary of their opponents setting this up in the first phase of the game. Once formed though, it is very difficult for the other player to win. Twelve men's Morris boards are also known, these having a diagonal line connecting the corners of the three concentric squares on which players can make rows of three. However, there are 24 points on the board and each player has 12 men, so it is possible that without any captures in the first phase of the game the board will be fully occupied and no further moves will be possible. Other variants are five men's Morris with two concentric squares and five counters for each player and six men's Morris with two concentric squares connected by the corners as well as the sides and six counters for each player. In six men's Morris a row cannot be made across the corners though this line does allow for greater movement across the board. The smallest member of the Morris games is three men's Morris and this is the oldest with its origins well before the days of the Roman Empire. The board is a square with orthogonal and diagonal lines joining the sides and corners. Each player has three counters which they alternately place on the board and then move them around to make a row of three. Once a player has made a row of three the game is over and that player has won. This small yet deceptively strategic game is brilliant for starting children off with historic board games as the Alfonso manuscript shows. This game is reduced to noughts and crosses when people have access to pencil and paper, though this game lacks the strategy of the original. Nine Holes is an early medieval variant of Three Men's Morris, which is often seen carved into cloister seats and church pews as three rows of three small pits forming a square. The game is played in a similar way to Three Men's Morris. The board is empty at the start and each player places alternately three men onto the board in turn. Following this, the men are moved around, but in this game can be moved anywhere. This makes the game a bit more strategic and a little longer. The game doesn't seem to survive the medieval period, though Three Men's Morris continues in popularity through to the 17th and 18th centuries. The other game I want to talk about here is Alkirki. This has its origins in the Islamic areas of North Africa and the Near East sometime in the second half of the first millennium. It appears in the Alfonso Book of Games, which is itself an illustrated translation of an Islamic text. It probably enters Britain in the 9th or 10th century along with chess and tables. In the late medieval period or early Tudor period, the game evolves into drafts when it is played on the then more available checkered board. I'll talk about this more in a video on Tudor board games and in the video on the 17th and 18th century games when the popularity of drafts is at its height. Alkirki is a simple game of movement and capture. The board is set out like this at the start. Players alternately move one counter each turn forwards, diagonally forwards or sideways but never backwards. Capture is by the short leap that is from a position in front of one of the other player's counters to a vacant position directly beyond in a straight line. Two or three counters can be taken in one move so long as between each counter taken there is a vacant position for the capturing counter to land. The direction of movement can change between capturing leaps. The aim for each player is to get as many counters to a position of safety beyond the opposing player's counters. Since backwards movement is not possible, once the player's counters have passed each other completely, no more captures are possible. The first few moves within the game allow for quite a number of captures on both sides. Then the game opens out and becomes quite strategic before one side manages to get past the other. 
the winner is the player with the most counters left on the board. I hope that you have enjoyed this short video. These games and many others as well as dice and playing cards can be found on our website.